Hi there. A couple weeks ago I made this video about Cyberpunk. Pretty good video if you ask me, but it also got the world record speedrun for redundancy. As seven hours later the biggest update in the game's three year history dropped and I cried on camera. My thoughts on the game at this point, we're gonna call this pre 2.0 from now on, were something like this. Game good. Story great. Graphics amazing. Gameplay, uh, decent. Glitches, funny but glitches also make me remember I am not a cyberpunk but rather a dire chump. This update has changed pretty much everything about this game so much that it might not even be the same game anymore. So I figured it's time for a second playthrough to see what's changed, what's the same, what's improved, what's removed. I hope you enjoyed this Window Ledge YouTube channel video. Story and mission wise, this game is pretty much unchanged, which is to be expected. The first couple hours play exactly the same, and it's only when you're released from the tutorial and into the world, you realize the insane gameplay overhaul that there has been. First of all, the UI is way clearer. Like, this isn't even a problem I had with the game, but now it's changed, I realize how annoying the original was. The old messaging system never told you when someone was typing, so you never knew when the conversation was over, meaning you could miss some vital information. Sometimes you'd have to read a certain data shard for a mission, which would mean you'd have to sift through your 200 other useless ones to find it. Now, it takes you straight there. These aren't groundbreaking changes, but they add up to make the game feel so much more fluid. But the real big changes come in the form of progression. Weapons no longer just tell you their DPS, but you can see their stats like reload time, stamina usage. The fact that this wasn't in the base game is actually insane to me. Instead of having to upgrade a weapon 50 times, you only have to do it 10 times, and you are no longer blocked from upgrading a gun past your player level. Again, these are things I didn't really think were wrong with the game, but I just can't imagine playing without them. But there is one thing I thought was wrong with the old game. Pre 2.0 proved once again this is Pro ZD's world, and we're all living in it. In order to get the best stats, you'd have to dress like this which, don't get me wrong, it's quite the fit, but, you know, now your stats like armor and crit chance are tied to your cyberware, meaning I can dress like a normal human being once again, but the best change is definitely to the skill tree. This thing is awesome. Da -da -dum. It has seen a complete rework, where instead of your skills being like, gain 0.4% crit chance when crouched and comatose, but rather, gain the ability to Super Smash Bros. melee wave dash. This actually completely changed the game for me. You can dash around faster than a car, leap to an enemy with your sword and perform a finishing move. With blunt weapons, you can just run into people, do a ground pound and pick them up and throw them like a moblin. And this perk makes enemies explode if they hit you. These changes all make fights feel so much faster paced. There is like no downtime now. But my favourite thing might have been the changes to throwing knives. You no longer have to run after it and risk losing it if it's stuck in a wall. Now if you headshot an enemy, the knife comes straight back to you, meaning you can chain these throws together and it feels so satisfying when you hit them. Now these are all changes to the existing gameplay. But what's new, I hear you ask? Well, one of the big new things marketed with the update was vehicle combat. Pre 2.0, you could only shoot weapons from your car in select story missions. Now you can do it whenever, which is nice, but I never really saw myself using it. I think the problem is that the side jobs and missions haven't changed. They weren't built around the fact that you could shoot from your vehicle, so I rarely got a chance to use it. What was added to incentivize vehicle combat was a new set of jobs where you commandeer a car and have to deliver it to a location while fighting off enemies. And this sounds great in concept, think high speed chases, explosions, gunfire, pow, whabang. In reality, it's like this. These guys aren't even driving above the speed limit, they are just adhering to the highway code, which I respect, but it's not really fun doing that. And in order to take control of their Honda Civic, you have to drive this, which has the fun quirk of being the only car you can't shoot out of, and the only one where enemies can't hit you. So what's the point of shooting? I don't know. And in the low, low chance you get involved in a chase, the cars are always behind you, meaning that you have to slow down because you don't know where you're going. And if you crash into a civilian car, then the police are now on your tail. And speaking of police, this is another thing that has changed. Pre 2.0, the police would just cheat. They'd spawn behind you and ruin your day even if you were backed up against a wall. Now, they don't do this. You can see their patrols on the minimap and you have the option to hide from them. Jeremy, don't say a word. The most effective thing to do when in a vehicle chase is just to stop your car, get out and kill them that way, which isn't really fun to be honest. I also want to talk about the stealth options. Now, I'm a big fan of stealth games. I'm a very sneaky hitman and a very sly Ellie Last of Us. And pre 2.0, I enjoyed playing cyberpunk in this way. However, I also acknowledge that it was nowhere near as good as these games, so it's upsetting to see that stealth gameplay hasn't really changed in this update. Shooting cameras with silencers alerts everyone in the area, you still feel very slow, and guys you have in a chokehold continue their conversations for some reason. What we're baking here 
Propyl methionine makes you trip so hard, even an animal would shit him. I think it'd be cool if you could silently take out enemies with melee weapons like in Hitman or or just do that, I guess, but overall, the gameplay overhaul has been awesome. Once you get past the gameplay, you're struck with a beautiful realization. The game is fixed. All the problems are gone. All the bugs have been f I honestly, truly didn't think you'd fall for that. This game is still broke as hell. NPCs get permanently scared. This guy's holding a burger while scared. They would also walk through vehicles as they please, get stuck in doors. This person... <laughs> this person was just perpetually pissing, which is a really funny looking sentence on my script. Like, how does this even happen? <laughs> and look at this person. They are kicking a body that no longer exists with a leg that no longer exists. How is this even... Uh, Richard, will you quit it? God. God. Oh, look what you did, Richard. My thoughts on the glitches are pretty much the same as pre-2.0. Yeah, they're really funny, but it just completely kills the mood when I'm trying to take this serious story seriously. The characters and voice acting are all so good, the animations for very minor actions are just so detailed, so immersive, and it's all undone when this happens. <laughs> Idris Elba, what are your thoughts on the matter? The game is fixed. What? No, we just came to the conclusion that the game is not fixed. Oh, hey! Idris, behave yourself, you're embarrassing me in front of everyone. Now, all the changes I've talked about so far have come from the 2.0 update, which is free for everyone, but alongside the update came a paid DLC called Phantom Liberty, which adds a new campaign, new area of the map, and Idris Elba. The base cyberpunk game costs 50 bones, and the DLC costs another 25 bones. Now, let's look at this new area. This is the map of the base game, and this is the area added in the DLC. Now I know what you're thinking, Window Ledge. That's a pretty tiny area for $25, and while you're right it does look pretty small, I have to disagree. In order to explain why I disagree, I gotta tell you one of the most disappointing things about this game for me. Night City is one of the most massive and beautiful cities in any game. The sense of scale is just unmatched. Just look at these gra- Just look at these graphics. It is so immersive, so futuristic, and as soon as I'm this involved in a game's world, I want to explore. And that was my biggest mistake. The more you look into it, the more you realise the city is actually fairly hollow. Of all the buildings in Night City, I'd say that you can enter only about 5% of them. And when you can, it's for a specific story mission and you can't get back into them once it's over. This was really disappointing for me when I played the game pre 2.0, and it still is today. But this new area shows what should have been Night City. It is much denser, it has verticality and bustling markets, they stole the Louvre, bedbugs and all, no space is wasted, which is why Dogtown is probably one of my favourite areas in the game, though its name is pretty stupid. And what's even better is what they do with the area. The missions in the Phantom Liberty campaign are on another level to that of the base game. In the first mission alone, you sneak into the new area, walk through the markets, climb a stadium, witness a plane crash over your head, race to the rubble, rescue a political figure from said rubble, kill 40 guys, take cover in an abandoned building, sneak past a combat drone, emerge in a museum, awaken a death machine that helps you kill 30 more guys, realize the death machine is evil, get chased through said museum by said death machine and do an awesome boss fight all while a spy thriller plays out around you. Oh my god. In the base game, you walk to a place, talk to someone, and walk back. Now I'm not saying the latter mission isn't important, but come on now. When you have levels of this quality, it makes me sad that the base game's missions haven't changed. And I know that's a lot to ask, but there's definitely a difference in quality. The side jobs are also so much better in Dogtown. They actually have stakes. Now the person you're trying to kill is also trying to be kept alive by an outside party, and you have to choose your allegiances, which has consequences. Do you choose money or morals? Yeah, money most of the time, but it's nice that the jobs actually make you think now. This DLC may have a steep price, but I believe it's well worth it. For Idris Elba. Cyberpunk now feels like a complete project. The first three years have been early access, and this is the full release. The fact that CD Projekt Red didn't abandon the game is great. There was a lot to like about pre 2.0, but now you've got a lot to love. The gameplay overhaul, new areas and mechanics are amazing, and the graphics and story are just as good. This is now definitely one of my favourite games, and if I haven't convinced you enough, look at my sick dance moves. Eh? Now you gotta buy this game.